So Anubhav, uh, long time. Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's start with a very simple conversation. You built an electric racing car. Yeah. Put that car on a German racing track when electric was not fashionable or the thing. Okay. And then when now, when electric is the thing, you have built a two-wheeler. So demystify yourself, uh, uh, Anubhav. Who are you? Why do you build things? And why do you build certain things in certain passage of time? I still get goosebumps when someone says that, you know, you've built a electric car which, which has gone into German uh, race tracks. <laughs> uh, so there's a very interesting thing here, Ravi. So uh, at, at the time of building that car, we basically, you know, gave this very interesting line in the in the, in the the team, which, which says that the track that has to be won, which basically came after a lot of uh, hard work and, you know, some tears which went into that track but this is what I wanted to this is what what I remember when someone tells me that the track that has to be won so uh, the journey started with you know we basically entered into the college uh, 2014, 2014. Uh, me and my co-founder Shubham both are 2014 batch IIT Delhi uh, we used to uh, there was a club in our college which was a formula student club which used to build these elect formula electric cars in our college uh, days and you know they used to build the combustion cars it was in 2016 when some of us in the seniors basically decided that you know, let's let's shift to electric vehicles. The world is moving on to that direction. And we're talking about 2016 when in India, you know, EVs weren't that hot a topic, honestly. Mm -hmm. So we started building uh, electric vehicles in 2016. It was a Formula Electric car uh, represented in India at multiple levels, including the World Championship in Germany as well. So that's how the entire journey uh, started. Uh, we learned you know how to build these world-class evs in india and we are very few people in india actually to know how to build evs at that time we were getting up getting bombarded with a lot of oems in 2018 sometime 2017. 17 and 18 okay. that you know why don't you build this particular component for us why don't you build let's say the motors or the bms for us and that's why we thought you know the india is actually going through a very interesting phase of this entire automobile industry being converted to electric vehicles and let's 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 build something interesting in this because there are very few people who are actually knowing how to build you know uh, electric vehicles with some german kind of a standards which are like really good quality products in india so that's where we started uh, why we chose two wheelers was a very interesting story. So we basically, you know, got into multiple uh, market research, saw multiple markets, which what was happening. So there was this very interesting company like Aether, which was there at that time. And then there's some work on for happening on the three wheelers and the four wheelers as well. But what we realized that, you know, there's a very interesting market which was emerging, which is the commercial mobility. And India hasn't actually seen ever commercial mobility two wheelers ever, right? So for example, if we imagine, let's say, when I say, let's say, personal four-wheeler and a commercial four-wheeler, there are two different vehicles that come in our come, mm -hmm. come in our heads, right? But that's mm -hmm. not the case with the two-wheelers. And it was a very uh, peculiar observation that we had that, you know, whatever two-wheelers which are being used in the commercial industry are mm -hmm. actually the product which are built for personal mobility, mm -hmm. which is not going to be the case because the requirements are so very different. Mm -hmm. So in personal two-wheelers, we personal mobility, we go for 20, 25 kilometers a day. Mm -hmm. In commercial, like the gig delivery riders, the people who are delivering for Zomato, Amazon, and multiple others, these guys go for 120, 150 kilometers a day, which is a very different requirement from the personal two-wheeler market, which the OEMs were catering to. And that's where we thought, you know, let's, let's build a company in the commercial two-wheeler mobility segment mm. and then when we deep down into it we realize that you know the entire ecosystem is missing it's not just a two-wheeler mm. play it's not like we have to just build a two-wheeler you know for like being an oem in this market it's like we have to build the entire ecosystem mm. right so for example when we saw like what actually can solve the problem of these riders so we realized we have to build the batteries we have to build the two-wheelers we have to build the swapping or the charging network mm. as well and then we have to basically make it connected to basically provide a full stack ecosystem to the end customer. So that's how the journey started. Um, going pretty great. A uh, lot, lot of milestones that we have already achieved. And uh, yeah, so this is what Buzz it is today. Like it's, it's a complete full stack EV ecosystem that we are building. We are live in Delhi, NCR. We have recently opened Gurgaon as well. Mm -hmm. So the journey is going great. Now we're looking to capture entire Delhi NCR as well very soon. Yeah. So it's not easy though, right? Oh. <laughs> no. So so our disclosure over here is that I've known uh, you for a for a, for a reasonably long time, right? And I'm, I've seen your journey. I think we connected in 2021 sometime. Yeah. Right? yeah. Do you really accept? Yeah. yeah. Connected for the first time. Yeah. Yeah, it's just long. It's, yeah, it's a long journey. I'm still stuck at racing car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, and I'm I'm more stuck at electric racing car. Right? Mm, yeah. Even more stuck at electric racing car, which you built at a time when yeah. people were not thinking about electric at all. Yeah. Yeah. It was either in the realms of 
enthusiastic academia and applied engineering. Let, let's right. prove this, right? And he won a World Cup. And you were accepted in a country like Germany, yeah. okay, which prides itself in the mechanization and finesse of mechanization in this particular area. You could have done anything, Nyanubar. That's right. You could have done anything. Okay. A lot of people give fancy talks. A lot of people write expensive books. What it takes to be an entrepreneur and yeah. what drives an entrepreneur. Okay. Success and failures are a function of time. So we will keep them away because neither I am an astrologer, neither you are an astrologer. I mean, what is your DNA? So, so demystify yourself in a sense that from where you come, why you have taken certain decisions, and this is as as big a decision of of your personal life, which you have done, and why leave all that thing away by working for someone someone else, maybe leading a, a huge land in some developed country. Um, or just getting into the academia and doing research and continue to do studies or research or just leaving the racing car phenomena totally and, and trying to solve a problem which probably has a way bigger impact and a way bigger scale. What it takes and what does it require beyond the intellect and skills of an engineer? Um, so I think on the background, uh, Ravi, so I think we both are from a similar kind of a background. So I think uh, you, yeah. uh, Shubham is from Lucknow. Uh, maybe if you can talk a little bit about yourself or the person. I am from Lucknow, uh, middle class family. Typical middle class family. My dad has been a man till retired recently. And uh, Anubhav comes from Ajmer, uh, same typical middle class family. I think what we realized uh, in our college days, Ravi, was that uh, there are two things that uh, fascinate us like anything. Uh, building something and solving a problem. Mm -hmm. While we were, uh, you know, moving on from race cars as our college journey was ending, these were two of the questions that were, you know, at the at the peak of our mind, that whether we will be building something or not going into the future, oh. and whether we will be solving a problem or not. So I would not say that we would not have built something going somewhere else, or we would not have solved a problem somewhere else. But starting a startup, and that too in a, a, a deep tech hardware startup, we were certain that we will be building something. So as you're saying that, uh, how did we leave something behind Shoot. while you were building the race cars and everything? Mm. If you personally ask me, I don't feel like I left anything behind. Mm. We were building something there mm. and we are building something now. Mm. We had a huge impact there. Mm. Basically, we were uh, connecting some of the applied sciences mm. to real tech. Mm. And uh, again, solving a problem, building something. Mm. And we are doing the same thing now. Mm. We were building something now. Mm. And uh, we are solving a problem. Mm. So uh, for I think me personally, and I, th I think I speak for Anubhav as well, uh, we never left that behind. It has, it has always been with us, building something and solving a problem. And so definitely the building, the building DNA is definitely there. Like for example, we really love to build things and solve problems. So for example, in fact, there's something that we often talk about as well. So there are multiple kind of entrepreneurs, right? People who, let's say, solve a problem with services. And then there are people who solve the problems with building products. Mm -hmm. We always categorize ourselves in the second category. We love to solve problems with the product first approach like let's let's build something which actually solves problem across let's say across levels across let's say accessible to everyone like so we build products like that apart from that multiple uh so f apart from the tech perspective right so like this formula student club that we just talked about it actually made us learn a lot of other things not just the tech part of it for example so how, how it used to operate was that you know for example you have to build a build a race car you have to arrange money for that you have to find sponsors and, you know, finding sponsors for, let's say, you know, uh, building something which is a formula electric race car, not a very, uh, you know, not a very money making thing, but, you know, very tech, uh, uh, you know, tech development kind of a thing which is happening in India, let's say, you know, it was a difficult task at that time. And we basically learned a lot of these skills. So we used to go to people, ask for, let's say, let's say four or five lakhs and then, you know, bring in that money and then, you know, build that car. Yeah. So it basically helped us actually learn entrepreneurship from the core. Like, you know, for example, you need money to build things. You need a plan to build things. You need to scale. You need to think of scale, how to make that thing. And you also need to think of in how that particular thing will make money. Yeah. So that was more like a, let's say a crash course in entrepreneurship that we did in a college by that club. Mm. And that actually uh, that actually pushed us to basically build something in the entrepreneurship itself. Mm. Because that's what we basically were doing since the, let's say, three years of our college journey. Yeah. So we are trained to do that. And apart from that, when we basically looked at the problem that, you know, India is basically moving, let's say, you know, transforming from a, let's say, a combustion or a petrol first kind of a market of the automobiles to, let's say, electric or a battery first 
market then it was a very interesting problem for us to solve as well because we were the pioneers at that time from the at least a student kind of a levels that we were operating on mm. so it was a very obvious choice and uh, about the market so it was a very uh, interesting market because it basically helped us you know tick mark all the uh, all the possible checklists that we are looking to build for example it our product was having an exponential impact in what we were basically in the in the lives of the people that we are changing it for we are basically you know uh, solving that uh, uh what you can say the the social satisfaction when you when you basically get when you build something for a for a very uh you know let's say a neglected sector so that's what also being ticked up and apart from that the, the 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 product that we are making was economically also making sense for all the stakeholders right not just the company not just the customer which is the delivery rider and not just the let's say the financiers also everyone basically can make their business models made sense and that's where we thought you know let's just get into it let's build a very large company out of it all three of us are engineers right <laughs> yeah right um purely as a as a as of course you mean guys in a different thing because you are graduate to uh, entrepreneurship and i'm still an engineer and yeah still still an engineer okay racing cars electric racing cars or even without electric race, racing cars even in in the sector of automobiles yeah with four meters they're considered to be a marvel of design and engineering right. that's right you left that yeah and you're building something which is commodity or you want to make it as a commodity i why i'm still stuck at it why why would you do that interesting so it's not it's not that uh, it's 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 not that less in tech what we are building right now it's it's a very hardcore tech product that we are building it's not just a two wheel as i already said right so we basically build the entire ecosystem so we our, our biggest proposition that we are basically giving the market is that we basically give you the maximum uptime Mm-hmm. because the kind of market that we are operating in mm-hmm. right so people who work in this market the delivery riders they can't even afford to have let's say 10 to 15 minutes of downtime mm-hmm. and even after let's say years and decades of you know machine building or let's say automobile building your combustion bikes also gets down sometimes which and is, that's a kind of also a, a function of track you cannot have a downtime you that's have right down time be on a particular point. that's right and that's you need right to have that kind of consistency that, that's your the, life depends that's on. the kind of technology that we wanted to build so that's where you know build the entire ecosystem how the so so you must have seen let's say the softwares interacting with softwares hardwares interacting with hardwares here we have to make the hardware interact with the software right mm-hmm. so that's the kind of a complicated tech that we had to build so which basically definitely the dna came from the formula electric car uh, like the formula car that we are building but right now what we are doing is also very fairly tech complex mm-hmm. and because shubham comes from a very tech intensive background he he is a cto and mm-hmm. operations also he handles so he basically unders- understands tech and if if the tech part of this particular part basically you know satisfied his tech mm-hmm. hunger I'm, i'm sure this is very tech intense but i think he can talk more about yeah, it definitely yeah. so uh, initially coming on board uh, ravi if i tell you very honestly uh, my sole uh, uh, non negotiable was whether i'm going to be technologically satisfied working on something like this or not mm-hmm. if this is just on the two wheeler uh, apologies but i'm not building something that i would want mm-hmm. so uh, a lot of what we had learned uh we had college while designing the four wheeler while designing the electric race cars we are discussing a lot of that tech has gone inside this mm. i would not say the race car dynamics has directly gone into this way but a lot of engineering and a lot of uh, us evolved as engineers has gone into this mm. so uh, as surprising as it may seem to you sitting from there uh, we find it to be a low grade mm. like uh, it was like a four year uh, graduation via race cars mm. and applying that technology applying that evolution mm. into solving something for the mass i mean so for us it just it's it's like an obvious choice mm. if i would put it that like look in, your intentions are surprising okay and because it's it's not easy and we're you are very young it's not with it's not very easy to move away from something which is construed uh, or or which in fact is a marvel in any way uh, but i'm not surprised because i'm seeing seeing your day kind of uh, you guys you know, are change makers in a way that the materials which you which you have used in the bike and this is a pretty robust machine right yeah. this is not one of those plastics no okay this is not you have used that it's light okay it has got almost fault tolerant software and then and it never it just never goes down you built your own ecosystem uh in terms of uh, control of uh, uh energy into this so that uh the the livelihood of a, of a person is not obstructed which is far more important than a formula 
uh, track uh, to be to be verified. You can lose a race, but look, you know, here you have to go back with some money so that you can feed your family, right? So this is there. So very high metrics. So I'm not surprised by the engineering and movement of engineering. In fact, a lot more engineers should do this. Um, um, because and probably as an engineer will give you far more satisfaction because unit economics you cannot have that same unit economics of right. racing car. Neither you have those kind of luxuries of doing several mistakes and then uh, arrive at an optimal uh, path of, uh, of of engineering. So you have done that. That's right. So we 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 often uh, we often call this and we often discuss this as well. As you said, you are a, you're a full time engineer. So we have also seen this transition where we basically were a hundred percent engineers at that time when we graduated and then we are zero percent entrepreneurs. We didn't understand, let's say, your economics. We didn't even know like the business has to make money ultimately to basically it has to survive, right? Uh, you're engineer. Was that the technology should make sense. The technology should make sense. We we want to build technology. Sense, and then you know, slowly we progress into it. We started, you know, learning, okay. Uh, it's not just the technology. The te technology also has to make money. It has because ultimately, if you want, if you want something to be sustainably large, mm. it has to be profitable. Mm. See, there are people who do NPOs. There are there are people who do multiple other things as well. But at the end of the day, a lot of impact which has been happened on the world in terms mm. of tech mm. has come from the profit making organization because there is a very uh, first of all they have money to basically you know rebuild or let's say re innovate multiple other things because mm. you're making profits from your current uh, tech that you have already offered in the market. Hmm. So that's what we wanted to kickstart. We wanted to basically kickstart, a, let's say, a, you know, what you can say, an, an engine of innovation by starting with this part of your tech into the market, make some money out of it, and then, you know, refine it, refine it, refine it, so that it becomes a, you know, ideal product for commercial two-wheeler applications in India and then beyond world as well, beyond India as well, yeah. Well, look, you're already a leading example in the sense that, look, yeah, one is that you can you can build a pretty cool, robust engine, right? Yeah. Second thing, you, you take that engineering to a particular business model, which is profitable, hmm. Why we are changing lives. Yeah. Right? And we're changing lives almost every day. That's right. If not every day, every you know, almost every day, you are changing lives. As in the faster you scale, the faster you change lives. That that right? that that's a that's a very right thing. Of course, like for example, another really interesting example of this, right? So when we when we first launched our pilot, right? So we started. We 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 are building products for a very long time, and then we also had to survive through COVID as well, when the entire mobility just got wiped away at, at a time. Like we have we have been through the pandemic, and we are the company which has survived pandemic. Hmm. Fortunately or unfortunately, whatever it can it can be, you know, portrayed into. But I think that particular phase has also, you know, transformed us into very resilient entrepreneurs mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. So when we are basically, you know, started our first pilot, and then you know we gave some of these bikes to the delivery riders, and then they came back came back after a month stating some fact that okay, we have been able to increase our net take home incomes to these level. That was a kind of satisfaction because now you are basically. You know, putting you, you now you're making to put you know more food on the table of that particular person like who, who couldn't even afford that before you. So that was a kind of a very interesting impact that we wanted to build this in into the into this particular market, and that was also a very big driving force for sure. Like let's let's continue to innovate and you know let's continue to increase these numbers. Mm -hmm. For example, if you're now let's say increasing his take home incomes by let's say five six thousand rupees per month, five six thousand rupees per month might not sound that big to us. But for people who are earning only ten to twelve thousand rupees a month, increasing their income by another five six thousand, it's basically you know they can do so many multiple things with that fifty sixty percent jump in their take home incomes, right? Mm -hmm. So that was a kind of satisfaction that we had. Okay, we have built something. We have invested our two to two and a half, I think, three years of our of our years. of our time into building this thing. But now it's basically reaping in the fruits. Mm -hmm. And apart from the money that we are making, definitely that those those kind of uh, you know, the, the words that we used to get were the kind of a bigger motivators for us to, you know, continue to build in this market for sure. So a lot of people have written books and they talk about compassionate capitalism and this yeah. is what. So the network effects you create, the faster the goodness happens. That's right. And it's all, uh, you're still doing business. You, you don't, you're, you're as aggressive as any other entrepreneur. You want to uh, create a large institution uh, with, uh, with Baz. Uh, Shubham, you started with excellence in engineering and somehow that was a driving force and that's we are all engineers you know, and excellence of engineering is not easy. It's not easy. Just good enough is not good enough. And in the business we are talking about just good enough is not good enough. I, you, yeah. know, uh, you know, accidents cannot happen. You know, this is not where a software bug happens and it's right. okay. Right. You can put a patch 
okay people can lose their lives people uh, in if and or uh, that's a worst case scenario or it can slow them down and if it slows them down then the delivery doesn't happen and delivery doesn't happen and directly impacts their livelihood yeah it is the wallet size right so when when this transition happens on the book how does the culture changes within the company hmm so this transition from engineers to entrepreneurs yeah. i'm i'm assuming you're talking Because about that right you are founders you are engineers you are doing this hmm. all fine but now you have people and you have hired so many people right so how do you build that culture and different people come to you uh, or join bars for for different reasons right uh some of them joining because of the machine which you will some of them joining because the ecosystem you should some of them are joining because they see an opportunity to do a general management some of them are joining because they want to scale your factory some of them are joining because they want to attain the operating and some of them are joining because the purpose is to serve the the, yeah, the last the delivery, delivery workers right yeah uh so different people so how how do you so what is the culture on bars today so team dynamics is definitely very important right so uh do as you are as you rightly said like we are basically divided in multiple uh multiple departments today like for example there are people who do production there are people who do operation there are people who raise capital there are people who build products mm -hmm. but ultimately you know everyone has to be aligned with a one particular goal mm -hmm. so we have been able to build this interesting culture in bars where what we do is you know first of all we basically build a very uh transparent communication yeah. and I, i really want to thank shubham as well for that because he has been a you know a pillar for that he has been the initiative taker okay let's we need to do this we need to basically make more transparency mm -hmm. we need to basically you know make everyone realize what we are actually working for for example let's say the production people in their head they are working towards building a bike mm -hmm. but ultimately that's not what the company is doing company is basically you know working to basically make the lives of the delivery riders better mm. so at the, at the end of the day that particular person from production also has to be aligned on that particular part so we have this very interesting you know culture in the company where we every every fourth saturday we basically have a full team meeting mm. so for example this particular conference room is completely fixed uh, completely filled with four other conference rooms in multiple other location people join from let's say our production plant people join from from our hubs which are like operational hubs where we run the operations from and then we basically you know talk about it for example what has happened in each of the departments whether it be the business whether it be the production whether it be the operation whether it be the product as well and how it's basically going to impact our end customer mm. like what are the kind of impacts that we are looking at? and this is this exercise that we do on a monthly basis mm. so that you know everyone basically aligns with like what exactly is this company about what exactly are we trying to do because for example sometimes it can be monotonous for example let's say you're building you're building one particular bike every 20 minutes imagine like for for some of the people it can be monotonous but let's say if that same message can be translated into your basically making another bazigar every 20 minutes mm. right so that is what we want to make them related to and that's a kind of culture that we have built definitely a very transparent culture uh definitely a very uh, you know a team of very ambitious people who really want to do things mm. so some of the times we don't even need to say our team that you know you need to go on ground they really go on to ground they find the problem okay this is something that we can improve on to and then they come back to us and let's say like why don't we do this why don't we do that so this is a kind of very interesting culture and i think a uh, big believer of the fact that you know great culture can definitely mm. you know push good companies towards great companies yeah now let me i think there's a very interesting uh, thing also from the formula student right uh, so there was this very interesting saying in the formula student which says that you know it's worse to mm. build an, an a car with a c team it's better to build a c car with an a team with an a team so we are very strongly uh, believers of uh, building a, building a team first sure. yeah an a team will make an a product follow in my itself yeah to, today like for example if you have built the a team your product it will just be a matter of time when your product will go from c to a but if you have built a c team to more, today you might be at a product but in a blink of an eye the product can go to c or that offering can go to c as mm -hmm. well so definitely a, a building a very great team has been the prime focus and uh, fortunately you know for example uh, the co-founders the group of co-founders that came together to build this company we basically now though we know each other for like last 8 years or what almost a decade almost a decade yeah so that's the kind of trust that we had so we basically were from the same formula electric team so apart from me and shubham there are two other co-founders as well who looks after the supply chain the production part and uh, yeah i think i think team is a very important pillar for show sure. and then personal i didn't any yeah many class family parents there what was their reaction and you could have done it <laughs> and we are not so india has changed rapidly yeah, that's right we were starting you know this was not a, a thing still 
was a thing if you want to do a marketplace or if you want to do a B2C, if you want to do a consumption software story or something like mm. that. This thing, what was the reaction? That is one. How things have changed now and what is the gap in today's uh, intellectual, that means from education to policy making infrastructure, it needs to improve so that not people do what you are trying to do. No, I agree. So I think I think parents have definitely been supportive for sure. Uh, okay. And uh, there has been multiple reasons as well. For example, you know, as, as I already told you, right, we come from a we come from a family which is like a family income of let's say 20, 30,000 rupees a month, right? Which is not a very fancy family we come from. Mm. Uh, but it's also not like we need to put food on, we need to think of the food, food on the table. We are like somewhere like lower middle class or middle class kind of families we come from. So, but when we got into IIT, and I think this was the expectation from you as well, that, you know, now this guy will be in like one crore plus plus kind of packages and this... We were basically <laughs> hypothetically responsible somewhere yeah. that now the family's fortunes are going to change. Yeah. Because yeah. all you've heard about uh, graduates from IITs and uh, top institutions are that, uh, uh, you know, a few crores of packages, mm. just another thing. Mm. So that was the kind of expectation. The expectations were there for sure. It was but, never mentioned to us. Mm. So no pressure on us. Mm. Very noble of them. That yeah. never, uh, but you can sense the expectations. Yeah, yeah, totally. Expectations were definitely there. But I think very interesting phenomena which happened was that, you know, after after our, after our graduation, Shubham uh, had some plans to go for the master's and then, you know, we had some conversation. Let's try to build this particular thing. And this will be your extended master's itself. What do you learn over here? Like it will be another very interesting thing. And based on that this particular... This is beyond master's, by the way. Exactly. This agree. Like agree. Beyond <laughs> master's. <laughs> agree. So based on that particular fact, I told my um, I told my family that, you know, I, like Shubham, is already go, Shubham was already planning to go for master's. Like if I would have gone for master's, I would not have given you any money for the next two years of show. Then let's give me, give me two, two years where maybe I don't give you any money. But I might not be taking any money from you as well. So maybe let's start with that. Like by now you have been giving me money for the four years of my college. Maybe instead of let's say jumping a very large step where I start giving, you know, money to the family. Let's let's start with a phase where the money, the family also doesn't give me money, right? And let's wait for two years. Maybe I'll be in that situation where I can provide for the family after that. So I think, but yeah, I think it has been very noble of them to basically support us and, you know, uh, have their patience. So I think and remember, I remember in COVID, uh, we couldn't even give ourselves salaries. So we became uh, very debt heavy at that time. We had to go to our families only to basically ask for money at that time because entire, it, during COVID, no, no one was moving. And it was a very uh, difficult phase for us as well. For example, you know, when well the world was moving and shifting from, let's say, uh, you know, work from home kind of a culture, we basically shifted our homes to our office. So we used to have an office in the basement, which is the office that is there right now as well. We have kept it. Not a very expensive one it was. So we have made a lab over there. So uh, we we basically, you know, stayed in that office for the for the for an entire four months of the lockdown. Right. We used to cook from there, we used to bath from there. It was like seven, eight people which were just sleeping, working from that particular place itself. The entire Delhi was locked. Like the entire office was locked from outside and we used, we used to be working from that basement at that time. I think we made some good progress as well at that time. But yeah, uh, so that's, that's, that's the kind of, uh, uh, it's, it's entrepreneurship is basically ups and downs. So I think the biggest learning also that I have been able to get is like you, sometimes you have to hang in there. And another very interesting thing, I think that this is also something that I've also told Shubham a lot of times. I think we have implemented this as well. Uh, so people work, because of two main reasons. Number one, either you're giving them money or basically it's passionate for them or you're feeding them passion. Mm -hmm. So there's something I have often tell Shubham that, you know, when you can't give money to people, feed them passion and they'll still do the work. They'll mm -hmm. still be with and you. How things have changed now or what do you think should change from the education system, what we have? Yeah. Um, because you know you're scaling, you require skill, right? Also, there are similar entrepreneurs, uh, you know, who want to take entrepreneurship. They hopefully will not go through uh, the rough patch, if I can say, which you guys have gone through. It has not been easy. It has not been easy in terms of sorting out the supply chain, building the product, raising capital, and taking it to a level where it is stabilized now and now you can confidently scale and you have, you can, most plans don't work in, during the yeah. early because everything is a variable for you and nobody is putting a constant against these variables, right? So it's a mathematical equation which is, which is even funny, you want to solve the mathematical equations, but the equation is one, variables are so many. Okay, and so you can't do that. But 
do you think things have changed or things should change in terms of because government is doing a lot of things at least we hear government is doing a lot of things at least in my space which is aerospace and defense you have got these large government grants and funds yeah. and everything is happening in that space i'm i suppose everything is happening in the space of uh, deep tech also which i understand a little bit uh but also from an education uh, uh, perspective university school level okay um uh, why somebody should wait till they uh, graduate from an iit why can't you be, become an entrepreneur even before that or how do you hire skilled people rather than folks with degrees per se because you require skill so, so i'll i'll i'll, I'll so take it one see the world one by one i'll take it uh definitely things have changed things have improved so when we started uh there used to be a saying which is hardware is hard we right. there were not many hardware companies being built from india right. every hardware piece of tech was being built either in us or in china right. now you know for example you also see so many hardware companies being built from scratch in india because hardware has been hard right because of its either capital intensive nature or it's actually very difficult to find good hardware engineers as well right. in india right so for example you can find software talent is 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 available because you know there has been some it internet boom which has happened multiple uh, you know students have got into the computer science engineering which has been let's say you know the the top choice for 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 the students but now the world is changing you know for example evs are coming into play robotics is coming into play and very new age hardware is coming into play which is basically you know uh, number one the times are changing the venture capital is available the capital and the the guidance and the mentorship is also available for people to start these companies because there has been there has been some pioneer entrepreneurs and pioneer companies which have been built in india mm. where you know students can actually learn from them they might not be able to actually interact directly with the entrepreneurs but it's easily you know available on the internet what exact what they did wrong what they you know they did right for example this podcast is also one of that right for example we are sharing our learnings mm. so that is something which is available now which was not there let's say 7 8 years 6 7 years back i'll say mm. uh definitely things have been better and apart from that uh, i think i would like to uh let me add one uh, point before it becomes uh, an obsolete one so we are talking about what should change and uh, we are talking about uh, the different identified stakeholders for example the venture capitalist firms or the institutions uh the point that we had mentioned before this was uh, uh about family and how they have been supportive mm. so what we witnessed was insane support from our families what i would want to highlight is that is the first thing that should change basically no one is going to uh, uh you know label it as an as an organization or as a uh as a labeled organization basically that these are the rules how it should change etc etc but th- that is the first organization where you would expect support as soon as that changes you get a lot of uh, courage that there is someone who is blindly believing in you and you have a fallback net right. for example i had this complete support from my parents uh, family that even if four years down the line you are good for nothing conventionally good for nothing earning nothing bringing nothing home you you will still be fine and that was the first thing that i think uh, once we start discussing conventionally uh, it would become offset but that is the first support that you get moving forward from there as you enter the world you will you will encounter institutions you will encounter professors you will encounter peers uh industry experts oems vcs everyone and moving forward from there there will be rules how they will they are supposed to change uh there are you know uh, uh, conventional ways how the it boom came around and you know vc market changed around it companies around it changed mm. there were jobs created but the first step i i just wanted to mention be- before it becomes obsolete that i think i realized uh we had insane support and families can for the first thing and for the first, for the first time incept this that you can be an entrepreneur mm-hmm. irrespective of the degree irrespective of the qualification irrespective of the uh experience i would not say expertise there are definitely expertise required expertise be uh perseverance hard work etc etc not tech skills not uh, coding skills not hardware skills we skills obviously going forward from there as i was saying uh times have changed in the past as we are entering the hardware sector uh, the robotic sector the environmental science sector things are going to change again mm. we have seen in the past 5 6 years as well how electric vehicles have taken up for the coming 2 uh, 2 3 years 4 years we will be seeing uh, robotics as well it has been around but you can see more of that we are we are seeing aerospace engineering more and more we are seeing environmental engineering more and more mm. so that part is supposed to be in for sure starting mm. from here
Oh. Well, definitely, it is it is changing. For example, uh, uh, recently, because of some of these incidents which have happened, let's say this uh, Shark Tank India kind of effect which is happening, right? Mm. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, you know, entrepreneurship is basically getting deeply rooted into the Indian parents as well, right? For example, this is a very interesting career that pe- people can actually build a very good career in. Mm. So this is changing definitely. Apart from that, what you talked about, let's say the student entrepreneurship, so we are also not very far away from that particular category. In fact, when we started this company, we started incepting this company during a college days itself. Uh, in fact, that was the reason we didn't set sat for placements during our college days, right? So placements happen in December 2017, like last uh, seventh semester of your engineering. Hmm. And before that, only we started incepting this company, though we are not exactly on this uh, uh, scooter market because what happens is like it always takes a... The idea takes a gazillion shapes before it actually moves on to the refined what we are today. And it might be the case, let's say like two years from today, the scooter and the ecosystem might be very different from what we are seeing today. Mm. Because it's further going to be refined for the exact problem that we are trying to solve, right? So we started uh, incepting this company during the, during the college days itself. Mm. So definitely there has been really good push from multiple ecosystem partners for students also to be entrepreneurs and there has been really good examples as well. Mm. In fact, IIT Delhi too has been a pioneer in, in, in promoting student entrepreneurship. Uh, multiple reasons you can say. Uh, for example, uh, the college also had its own uh, incubation center as well mm. where they used to incubate uh, students who are trying to build, let's say, entrepreneurship. In fact, IIT Delhi also offers this extended uh, what they call it, extended placement, right? Yeah. Deferred, deferred placement, deferred they call it. Deferred placement. So, for example, what happens is you can basically try entrepreneurship for one or two years. And if it doesn't work out, you can come back to the college for basically sitting in the campus placement itself. So, there's a kind of policy that IIT Delhi has made and this can be replicated in multiple other colleges as well. Where, you know, students have a sense of security as well that they can, you know, try building something in the entrepreneurship. Mm. Though there has been some theories you... you there has been some theory which says that you don't need to have a plan B to basically make the plan A work. Yeah. But just to build more comfort around, let's say, building culture, right? That has to come into India. And definitely, see, we are... Uh, Most we people are, who say that they are either authors of the book or they don't have a middle class. Or that's right. That's right. But there has to be some they sense of security. Of, uh, abundance and, already with them so they can... That is that is right, Ravi. For example, let's say if if, if I, look, I, I look back, right, for example, you know, what... What pushed me to, let's say, you know, take a leap into entrepreneurship, take a leap of faith in this particular thing where I could be making, let's say, literally zero or actually burning money of my family into this, right? What what helped me was that, you know, by the time that that IIT Delhi background, right? For example, I knew that if this doesn't work, I'll be able to take, let's say, 30, 40 lakhs job anywhere, like in the next one or two months itself. So practically in my head, I can burn, let's say, 40 lakhs of money into this because I can recover that money into the next one or one, one or two years because of the degree that I had, right? It was because of the sense of security, right? Mm. But if I wouldn't have had that sense of security, I wouldn't have gone deeper into it, let's say. Mm. For example, maybe I would have, uh, let's say, left hope in the COVID times when nothing yeah. was working or maybe I would have uh, left hope during, let's say, you know, the times when we actually had the uh, three-figure uh an amount into the company's account not my account the company's account had like 840 rupees or so length right but actually that is what helped like for example you know you can figure it out you have the network you have the you have the uh, you have the what you can say the the net that you can fall back on and where you have dropped that net is basically going to make you comfortable like for example let's say today imagine an example let's say uh let's say we have a very very rich background right we can actually dive deeper into some of the sectors which have been really untouched. The risk of basically creating those comp- that kind of a company in that segment is very high, mm-hmm. right? You can actually, 99% of the time, you're going to lose money into that segment. But if we'll be having that safety net, mm-hmm. we can actually go deeper into actually trying that thing. Mm-hmm. So I think it, it really helps. Oh, that's very honest of you, man. Totally honest. And that, that really, really helps. And that safety net. Do you think time has come for universities? Why universities only? You know, schools. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, somebody can be as young as 12 years old, 13 years old, and they want to build something. You know, so there have been enough smart people who have built companies yeah. before they even graduated. In fact, most of the large companies in this age have been built by people who are who, who did their graduation later on. They didn't even yeah. finish yeah. their graduation. Do you think we have, if that safety net can be provided earlier, it helps to save time? And it basically gives more focus of at least getting the product released quickly 
so that the business can be built. Do you, do you think, uh, and, and, and to be very blunt, do you think time has come for at least some, if not all, some of the schools to have funds? Okay. You call them grants, you call them funds, you call whatever you want to call. Hmm. You know, grants, I construe grants with signs, yeah. per se, because we are for a purpose, we don't, you don't see a returns for a very, very long. Yeah. Yeah. But funds, smaller funds. So I think I think this is happening as well. Uh, uh, some of, for example, uh, Delhi has been at the forefront in 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 promoting entrepreneurship. This is a very interesting uh, uh, thing. So I when I came when we came to when we start this company, I so uh, one of my investors is Kunal. Mm. Uh, so Kunal Khattar. Mm. Uh, so he's a GP of Advantage mm. Mobility Fund. Mm. Uh, so one of he's one of my investors, and I basically went to meet him at an event which was happening, I think somewhere is some, some sort of hotel in, in Gurgaon. One we work in Gurgaon. Yeah, one yeah. we work in Gurgaon. At that particular place, uh, there were kids pitching, mm. right? So there were kids pitching. There were school kids, uh, I think eighth or ninth class, maximum 10th, mm. right? They were pitching and this was like a pitching kind of a competition between kids. And so the culture is basically uh, coming in where, you know, entrepreneurship is being promoted. Apart from that, this is interesting. Uh, uh, I don't I don't know about the results, how it happened, but I think there was this interesting, very... Uh, uh, activity which was in the news as well where you know Delhi government was uh, providing some small funds to the students to basically build some entrepreneurship case studies right like mm -hmm. for example they need to build something with that uh, 1500 2000 rupees or so it was more like a project and then they need to build an entire business plan around it like how will you actually sell it and make money out of it mm -hmm. so I think these kind of activities which actually uh, you know helps people to think mm -hmm. and how entrepreneurship works like, apart from that I'm a big believer of the fact that you know entrepreneurship is deeply rooted in India Mm. We have never been a service or a job economy. India has always been an entrepreneurship economy. Uh, though that entrepreneurship was not being looked from a very, uh, mm. let's say, uh, glorified perspective by now. For example, people used to call it dhanda kar rahe insan, right? But I think that is changing now. People are cha people are basically that that perspective is being changed. That for example, it's not dhanda; it's actually business. It's actually an entrepreneur yeah, entrepreneurial institution that the person is building so i think that particular culture is also changing apart from that definitely a spot on schools should promote that mm. and it is happening as well mm. uh i think on the school part uh, Ravi, that you mentioned i have a very uh, uh interesting observation mm. so in school uh i'm sure you have played a lot of sports i have played a lot of sports and we were very clear that we were not going to be sports persons professionally mm. still we played a lot of sports mm. it can be any sport mm. and that is something that every kid does what most of the people do mm. so what that basically does is sports is not for making me a professional sports person it is for me to evolve my character mm. and i think entrepreneurship can be taken in a similar mm. way just as good schools provide good sports uh, uh, environment, good uh, music environment, uh, other environments apart from uh, the basic uh, curriculum. Hmm. Uh, in my understanding, it's not for you to uh, go and pursue it professionally right away. Hmm. In my understanding, it's for you to build your character. Hmm. Entrepreneurship helps you build your character like anything. Hmm. That's right. Madhav, it's like it is going to teach you uh, punctuality. It is going to teach you uh, perseverance. It is going to teach you honesty. Ownership. Ownership. It is going to teach you that there are no hacks in life. If it has just worked out like that uh, luckily or uh, quickly or you've just had your way through it mm. you've done it once you won't be able to do it again mm, wow so i think uh, just like sports oh it's awesome this is just building character oh that's awesome and 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 what kind of infrastructure we need to build in this particular country at from a school to because i, I i'm just i'm can't agree more. That's a fascinating way of putting things because uh, whether you want to become a sports school, still have stadiums, they still have playgrounds, yeah. they still have equipment or something like that. Uh, that infrastructure doesn't exist anywhere, by the way. Maybe a little bit in Delhi, maybe a little bit uh, in other institutions. But if it has to be main mainstream, that whosoever you are, in whichever city you are, tier one, tier two, tier three, village, or whatsoever, if you're going to a part child, if you're going to a middle mm -hmm. school, if you're uh, if middle school, if you're going to a high school, if you're going to a, you know, uh, university, if you're doing your PhD, if you're going for a research or something like that. If you want to play store, uh, sports, well, this is a place for you. What needs to be done uh, for that, Jogan? A uh, very policy-oriented, thought-provoking yeah. question. Uh, let me think. I think uh, I would probably try and relate this to sports again. So on my personal, in my personal experience, I played sports in school and I was quite fascinated. I very clearly knew that I'm not going to be a sports person. I would still come back and play. 
So uh, it's the same game. I'm playing in the school. I'm playing at home. Mm. So if there's something, some sort of uh, uh, unorganized uh, institution, mm. for example, there are uh, cricket coachings going on mm. here and there. That scouts, right? Right. They will promote me to go in mm. better my sport. Mm. I'm not going to represent India. I know where it is. No. But it would help me satisfy my building board character. And if you happen, and if you have a talent, or if you have a spirit, right. or passion to represent exactly. India, then somebody there are enough people who will back exactly. you up and say, "Don't worry about the kit; I'll get you the kit." Exactly. Hey, don't worry about the travel; I'll pay for your travel. Right. Hey, don't worry about this thing; I'll get you the sponsorship. Exactly. By the way, there are enough for uh, sponsorship if you want to play cricket. And if you look at the ecosystem, like everyone, look at uh, uh, the clubs. And look at uh, the national team over there and the international team over there. You know, these these are not the times where you get people from Mumbai or Delhi, Domingi, Mumbai, and Delhi. Now, yeah. if you look at see, if you look at the constitution, most of them are not from tier one cities. Actually, True. look at uh, how people are playing in IPL. Look, look at the constitutions. Of, yeah, they are mostly are coming from tier three cities actually because they have that hunger. They know that and they have that talent. So somebody has scouted them. Right. Somebody right. has taken the finances for them. To make them comfortable, because if that burden comes to a lower middle class, middle class family, you know, after some time, it yeah. hits you. It yeah. genuinely hits you, and then you need to have a world class equipment. I think right. that's that's another very interesting. So I really loved the approach that you gave about the yeah. sport and entrepreneurship, yeah. right? Uh, maybe you need if you're playing a sport, you might not be the sports person, or let's say the national level sports person. And similar to that, if you're let's say learning or doing entrepreneurship, you might not be the best entrepreneurs, but no, you, you don't want to be an like entrepreneur. You don't yeah, want to yeah, be yeah. You, are, you know, I want to work for a bank. I want to work for a bank. Exactly. What's wrong but in that? entrepreneurship to, teaches to, you. Yeah, yeah, I want to work on a shop floor. What's wrong? I want to That's become right. a professor. What's wrong with that? I think but, but you still you 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 just still feel you still play a sport. You That's still right. have a passion for or you may not have a passion, but at least you played. Yeah. So many people who played cricket. They say, I don't like the sport, man, you know, but I still play because my friends were playing, right? Yeah. And there's an infrastructure for that. But if you happen to make that as a career, and if the world, which is outside of your passion, looks at you, hey, there is a talent and there is this. So, so there's enough money today. At least for cricket, there is enough money. And now for other sports, oh, the money is become... much more than cricket. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's precisely my point. And it is, and and we have not even scrapped the surface, right? You know, you you know, for, forget about you. Just take cricket itself. I think cricket is way more evolved. If if they find a talent, somebody will come and they will scout you, and your journey towards uh, hitting the top level of uh, opportunity is there. Now, if you are not able to deliver, then so be it. Right. Okay, and people lose money also in that, right? Which is That's right. different. I've seen you guys, okay, raising capital. I've seen, I've seen the hardship. I've seen the hardship and sometimes heartbreaking hardship, which you didn't deserve. You, you come from a pedigree where you have created something which is a marvel. Now you're solving a problem which exists. You are solving a problem and a unit, a unit economics which is needed. Supply chain is, which takes time to build a supply chain. You just can't build it, right? Yeah. So why? Unlike a cricketer, nobody scouted you. You had to hustle your way. That's right. Right. How can we change? Because this has to change. Because as 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 we go, and if you really have to become a prosperous country, mm. okay, truly a prosperous country, we can't waste time. And our demographic is too young. They will not have patience for that. Because look, entrepreneurship. Once you're an entrepreneur, nobody stops you of taking your kit and your intellect and your skill and go to some other where capital is accessible. So I'm addressing the hardcore point. Debt is accessible. Equity is accessible. Yeah. Uh, whether it is venture, whether it is uh, engine, whether it is syndicate, <laughs> whether it is enough, enough it is money for sure. Enough accessible. money in the world. Much better if it happens at a school level, at an educational institution level, at a university level, at an engineering college level, right? If it happens over there, then there is a good pressure on institutions also, and there is some leverage which institutions because they also are answerable to their investors. Right. Okay. So they say, hey, this is a company of this particular professor, or this is a company which is incubated out of this particular center. Oh, by the way, I don't have to take a bet on the the value of death of uh, of deep tech. They have already done that. So why I'm giving money? I'm giving money for early stage growth. I'm giving money for mid-scale growth. I'm giving money for an IP or something like that. 
I think system doesn't exist. I think another very interesting extension of what we just talked about, Ravi, uh, because at the end of the day, people back people, right? People don't back businesses. People don't back ideas. People back people, right? So I think what what Shubham just said, right, can be a very interesting model of building such people, hmm. right? Because the people that we are talking about, let's say the people who are backed hmm. or the people who are let's say, build some really good things. There are some certain characteristics of these people, right? They are very resilient. Hmm. They are very, uh, like, ownership-driven, right? They are very, uh, they are confident. They understand market. They understand numbers. Hmm. And they are multiple, like, for example, if you, the, 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 the qualities can be, let's say, counted on hands for sure. Hmm. Like, for example, we can count, let's say, 10 qualities which are there and let's say, all the great entrepreneurs of all the greatest times, right? And what Shubham just talked about, let's say, the analogy between sports and entrepreneurship, right? I think it can be a really good phenomenon to build such people, build such qualities in such people, right? Hmm. So that, you know, when they actually get into the real world of entrepreneurship, they are the backable people. They are the people who can be back. They have already learned let's say resilience, they have already learned ownership, they have already learned how to, you know, see things in numbers, impact, can it be a big thing, can it make, can it make money, can it be an impactful problem proposition or not, mm. right, they can be multiple other qualities yeah, that, that we basically talk, for example, me and Shubham, I think we are sitting into a cafe a couple of months back, and we are like, here, uh, one thing that we have realized, we can never be with non-resilient people, mm. we, we are like so resilient that, for example, we are just discussing about thing, relationships and all, right? Yeah, so yeah. we are like, we can never be in a relationship with a non-resilient person. We have been so trained to be resilient at each of these instances, which have been through, you know, which have we have been through because of the entrepreneurship or career that we had for the last five, six years. Mm -hmm. Like it has basically evolved us into a particular human being, mm -hmm. right? So if we, if, if something is going wrong, it's a doable, it's a solvable problem for us. Right. So, for example, the first thought process we have is like, okay, let's say we'll be able to solve it. Mm. It's not like, yo, something has happened. Like, we are not fearing from that. And that has been, I think, this is more like a, we have been trained like that. Yeah. It's not like we were like this individual, let's say, six years back. It's, it, it's, it isn't like that. Basically, entrepreneurship teaches you to be such person. Mm. It teaches you that, you know, there will be hardships. You'll have to be ready for that. You'll have to be quick on your feet. Uh, there will be moments when you have to own your mistakes. And say that, okay, I've made this thing, but ultimately, uh, it could have happened, right? So, you will make mistakes. It teaches you multiple other things that, mm. uh, I think, entrepreneurship, truly, as Shubham said, like, it builds character. Mm. It's build your character. And I think it's, it's, it's a very uh, interesting policy if it can be made, let's say, on a school or a college level, right? Mm. Where, uh, let's say, let's say engineering colleges make good engineers, yeah. right? Uh, let's say... Uh, Medical colleges make good doctors. Mm. Just like that, you know, all of these places make good entrepreneurs for sure. Like because as an entrepreneur is more like a basic mm. uh, quality or a like quality which is I we, we believe that if it can be let's say translated into multiple people, mm. India's entrepreneurship future is very bright for sure. Mm. Because it's not like this is not a zero sum game. Mm. Like if Ravi is an entrepreneur, I cannot be an entrepreneur today. Yeah. We all can be entrepreneurs and we can still push the entire country ahead because there's a lot of scope already for sure. It's not like India can only have 100,000 entrepreneurs only. Mm. Tomorrow, if India has, let's say, 1 million backable people, India will have 1 million backable entrepreneurs. Mm. Like, as you already said, the world has enough money, right? It's not like, let's say, you know, there is enough money only for 100,000 entrepreneurs. Yeah, There's so many problems to be solved. A capitalist commodity. Exactly. So, it just needs to, like, we need to really build such people. Like people have to have those skills which basically make them a very, uh, you can say, the entrepreneur material, you can say. No, yeah, another interesting take uh, on what Anubo said. So what I feel how this this thing is going to inculcate in a board in, uh, in the masses. Cause, and I'll try and drive via two examples. So Shark Tank came into being. Shark Tank existed uh, outside India before this as well. Shark Tank came into being in India as a form of prestige. So... If you are funded at Shark Tank, mm. there is prestige associated with you. Mm. It's not just any other person who is associating that prestige to you. Mm. That person is an expert of their own field. Mm. So an expert is associating prestige with you. Mm. The startups that are getting funded in Shark Tank, whether they are going to make it big or not, is as good a chance whether I'm going to make it bigger, bigger or not. Oh. But what Shark Tank definitely ensured that people are going to understand that entrepreneurship via experts 
is maybe to test teachers. Ah. It does not require you to have, a, a, you know, an IIT degree. It does not require you to have $10 million in the bank. Ah. It does not require you to be from a very well-to-do family. Ah. That was one good initiative where expertise and prestige uh, were already well uh, did it. And the other thing that I would want to highlight, so 20 years back, uh, I together would not be flexing that we are uh, home to the most uh, unicorns of the country. Mm. They took small steps. And in today's world, when you specifically look at, they worked towards it 20 years. And today, uh, irrespective of the QS ranking, irrespective of the number of uh, you know, US offers, they are flexing that we are home to the maximum number of unicorns. So baby step. Again, uh, an expert in the field, a different field. Mm. I did any an expert in the field of engineering. Validated that entrepreneurship is a thing. Apart from engineering, irrespective of whether the, the, the startup is uh, technological or not, a uh, service-based industry, uh, software-based industry, this is something that is paid. That is prestige. In fact, that is another reason, you know, why in 20, I think 17 or 18, I really started this course on entrepreneurship also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, for example, they see, they saw, right, for example, let's say, okay, uh, we are already making the best computer science engineers, we are already making the best civil engineers, we are already making the best electrical engineers. Mm. What are we making best? Mm. And they saw like we are making the best entrepreneurs in the world. Mm. Let's try to build more such people. Mm. Let's try to, you know, teach more such people how to be entrepreneurs, what you need to be an entrepreneur. Mm. And that's why, you know, there was uh, there was this very interesting professor of ours, P. Uh, P. V. Madhusan Rao, right? Mm. P. V. M. Rao, sir. So uh, he started this entrepreneurship course in our college and um, it's, it was like a large class, like I think 400 plus people who used to attend, oh, uh, yeah. used to happen in Dogra Hall. Uh, and I think it was a very interesting way to basically, you know, inculcate, you know, uh, entrepreneurship in people. Mm. Because I think it's high time that entrepreneurship need to be marketed as well. I mm. think the the things like Shark yeah. Tanks are already doing that. Mm. Marketing entrepreneurship as more like a very lucrative thing. Definitely there are risks associated with it. Mm. People have been able to only see the good of it by now, the glorious... 100x, uh, 1000x kind of a stories only. But I think it's high time that, you know, we market entrepreneurship as something which is uh, ambitious, desirable, and uh, is, a, is a good career prospect as well. But it will definitely have its own hardship just like every other thing has, right? Mm. So, but yeah, I think which is happening, I think the discussion has been very thought-provoking for sure. Yeah, look, on the, we need to end this discussion somehow, but on this note, I need Ellie. So there's another founder I've introduced Sahil to you, and for that you know you may like to come back uh, to come to Rishi University. So he's an IT Delhi. Okay. Okay. Uh, he became an entrepreneur, but he became an entrepreneur. He want he didn't wanted to build a online version of education. Uh, he said that I'm going to build a university of entrepreneurship. I'm going to build it in a brick and mortar. That means I'm going to build buildings. I'm going to build makers lab. I'm going to have a fund, etc. And he's again, uh, you know, your alumni is from IT. Yeah. So there's something which is happening in IIT Delhi. Mm. Um, and uh, he says that, look, I don't compete with IIT Delhi. I've got huge respect for IIT Delhi. But, you know, he wants to create a university, which is a new university with a focus on two things, by the way. One is, of course, political leadership. So, you know, we should need great political leaders. Okay? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and and um, no, because if you look at um, political leaders, right, they go through a lot of hardships okay, yeah. in terms of their self groom You see, you still had a background yeah. uh, from IIT Delhi and a good alumni base. What is the alumni base for a person who wants to choose uh, politics as his future, right? So he goes to, he wants, he's targeting leadership. And the other aspect which he's targeting is entrepreneurship. So build a university. He's building a university. He's already in there. They can water. Hmm. And 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 he he's finding out all the ingredients. So he's saying that hey, there has there will be a makers lab. You come and build things, hmm. and get your funding. But you have to go through the strict filtration of any VC and does, and does yeah. that. There will be studios, and that studios I'll get you some of the best CFOs. If you want a CFO, I'll get you the best charter accountants. Hmm. Uh, I'll get you uh, uh, people who understand. Uh, the policy regulation, if you have to influence or something, I'll get you the best marketeers and all, but you focus on the market and what you want to build. Yeah. And after that, you do your follow-ons, okay? So I'm just I'm just squeezing the time for you to hustle and learn everything so quickly. So you, so, 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 so this thing. And I'm going to teach you entrepreneurship. And he's an IT Delhi guy, which he has told me, I should meet him. 
maybe next conversation is with him definitely uh, rather than Love with to. me thank you thank you sure. thank you all thanks ravi